been raining and it's going to rain some more. Whenever I uh, find myself in any kind of show shelter, a doorway like this, or just anywhere that will take you in, out of the elements, I often think of all of the previous forms of shelter I've had in my life. I'm thinking too of shelter that people have given me uh, emotionally or just by an invitational conversation. And uh, all the places that have uh, saved me from the elements, you could say. And uh, sometimes they're just bus shelters. Uh, sometimes it's a doorway like this. I remember a cave in the Himalayas uh, that saved uh, friends of mine uh, from a uh, blizzard and, uh, and a killing cold night, uh, allowing absolute survival, actually. And I think also of the shelter that people have given me in my life. Emotional shelter, invitational, conversational shelter, shelter they could sometimes barely afford to, uh, to extend, uh, but they did. And uh, there's something uh, remarkable about the way that you can be surprised by who offers you what kind of, of protection you need in your life when things get difficult, when the weather comes in in a terrible way. Uh, when you lose your bearings uh, emotionally or physically. This is a piece I wrote, which is a kind of summation of all of the different forms of shelter uh, that have taken me in through my life, and it's called Refuge. Refuge. Sometimes a nook, sometimes a nook. A wall half down. A swerve in the path where the breeze can't catch you. Other times, a made shelter, a shepherd's build-up of flat stones curved to keep the wind off. Once in the Himalayas, it was a cave in the living rock, taking you in from the killing cold so you could live to a grey, blank dawn. Then, on a winter's day, it was a breath of warmth from a kitchen door, palatial with light, and a daughter's face, the family behind, inviting you in, as if to say, of all shelter traveller you'll ever meet on the road, even with those you know, the stranger's love is best of all. The stranger's love is best of all. There is a remarkable way, especially when we're desperate or where we've had a sudden shock, the loss of, of a loved one, uh, a grief that's just pierced us to the center that we suddenly alight on something that until that moment had just been ordinary and every day. It could be a bird perching outside the window on a tree. It can be a cat just, just purring around our ankles. But it's just as if the world has come to come and find us and, uh, and offer us just a little of what we need. In the old fairy stories, when the young boy and girl were taken out into the woods to die and the hunter um, who was sent uh, by uh, some wicked person uh, found he could not actually kill them he would just leave them out in the woods it's a motif in all our fairy, fairy tales and uh, the child or the children wander around in the dark and they start crying and weeping and then suddenly they lean against something, they lean against a rock, they re lean against a tree. And it's just at that moment when the tree or the rock takes their full weight that that inanimate object actually speaks back to them. The rock speaks back to them, the tree speaks back to them. And it almost always says, uh, how can I help you, my child? So this is a this is a deep unconscious understanding of the way that the world can take our weight. The world can take us in at crucial times and that we should ask for that help actually and we should run for shelter at times or shyly uh, appear in doorways that we normally wouldn't actually approach unless we actually needed what we needed at that moment. 
sometimes a knuck, a wall half down, sometimes a knuck, a wall half down, a swerve in the path where the wind can't catch you, other times a made shelter, a shepherd's build-up of flat stones curved to keep the wind off. Once in the Himalayas, it was a cave in the living rock, taking you in from the killing cold so you could live to a gray blank dawn. Then, on a winter's day, it was a breath of warmth from a kitchen door, palatial with light, and a daughter's face, the family behind, inviting you in, as if to say, of all shelter, traveler, you'll ever meet on the road, even with those you know. The stranger's love is best of all. And isn't it always when we <clears throat> see someone we've known for a long time, as if for the first time, that in many ways the friendship begins again. Uh, we're suddenly in a new realm of appreciation, most especially in a marriage with someone who we've lived with for decades even, to suddenly in the kitchen see them as a stranger and to see the stranger that's about to emerge from them actually and to be hospitable to that stranger in them and to ask them to be hospitable and to recognize the stranger in you because we do always meet the new you, the new self in the form of a stranger. Will we be hospitable to that person we're just about to become? Will we be hospitable to the person, our friend or our spouse or our loved one or our child is just about to become? Refuge. I do believe as I've been talking, the rain has stopped completely and we've got a bit of sunlight.